Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode 627. What is the Mediterranean diet? BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, medical director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. I'm Dr. Kathy Maupin, and today we're going to discuss the Mediterranean diet, the diet that your doctor is always telling you you should follow, but doesn't tell you exactly what that means. Um, just a little background on it. In the 1950s, which was when I was born, um, we, we discovered that people who lived in countries that bordered the Mediterranean were healthier than people who lived in America. And because we're a land of immigrants, it wasn't the genetics that was the issue that caused the Italians and the Greeks and, and the uh, Lebanese to be healthier than we are. It was their diet. So we started studying the diet that they eat in the Mediterranean area. And in doing so, um, we studied and restudied and restudied whether this type of lifestyle and diet really did help people not get heart disease, strokes, or have diabetes. And in the end, they um, found that yes, being a Mediterranean and eating that diet, eating the diet that they eat, living the life they live, does help us with that. But I'm not so sure that what the, say, Mayo Clinic describes as the Mediterranean diet is what they really mean and what is really critical about the Mediterranean diet. So let me just go back and say, Mayo Clinic says that a Mediterranean diet has these four things. You primarily eat vegetables, beans, and whole grains. You eat fish twice a week. You use olive oil instead of butter. And you eat fresh fruit for dessert and not any other type of dessert. Nowhere in this does it have anything to talk about meat, cheese, eggs. I mean, this is not the Mediterranean diet that I ate when I was in these countries, and that's not what they eat. And I've been to cooking classes there. I mean, they, they do use butter. They, use, <laughs> they don't eat beans. I'm not sure where the beans came from, but that's, that's not necessarily something that is in the primary part of their diet. They eat a lot of pasta, and the pasta is made with a specific kind of flour called semolina flour, which is less glycemic than our flour. Um, and they do eat a lot of vegetables and fruit, but in that diet, they eat a lot of eggs, they eat a lot of milk, they eat cheese, they eat ricotta cheese. If you think about what's in lasagna, tomatoes, uh, peppers, um, lasagna also has ricotta cheese, it has meat, and it, and it has um, pasta. So that basically is what Mediterranean folks eat in Italy. In Greece, they have different, um, different preparations, but they, I, when I was in Greece, I never had a dessert of just fruit. It was always some kind of a sugary, creamy, flaky, crusted something. And so I'm not sure if what we say as doctors about a Mediterranean diet really is what causes us, what it causes Mediterraneans to be healthier. And what I'll, what I'll say is their diet has a lot of meat, fish, if, they're, if the people live on the coast, if, this, if the, their communities on the coast they eat a lot of fish, but they also eat a lot of meat, lamb, beef, veal, and pork. So... Maybe, the, and it, most of it is grass-fed, most of it is not, um, mo I mean, many places have very small flocks of, of sheep for milk and, and for lamb, and have, they don't have big uh, feedlots. So this is a little different uh, because it is, it is more um, personal and it's, it's less 
um, mechanized. But most everybody in these countries, because they have a night, they have a reasonable um, habitat in terms of temperature and rain, they have their own gardens, and they don't even have to necessarily um, water their gardens except in the uh, late summer. So these these folks eat food right out of the garden. When I was in a cooking class in Ravello, uh, Mama Agatha said, "Oh, just go out and pick the rockets, <laughs> pick the rockets out of the out of the um, out of my garden." And I didn't know what a rocket was, which is just the leaves of a daisy, which is what we <laughs> we eat. As you'll see it in the grocery store in the mix in the mixed baby greens. So I learned what rocket was, and but that's that's how they eat. They pick things out of their garden and they and they bring food to the table right from the garden. They wash it and they eat it. So um, <clears throat> they they do eat a lot of fish if they are near the ocean. Uh, if they're not, then there's more veal and and pork in their diet. They eat pasta and carbohydrates, but it's a little different. They don't eat as much as we do. Their portions are are smaller. They don't have as uh, they don't have preservatives, which is very important because if you cook every day, if you bake bread every day, if you make your pasta fresh, if you pick pick the vegetables out of your garden, you don't need preservatives. Preservatives are to keep the shelf life long enough so that if you're producing food, you can make a profit. And I understand that too. You don't want to waste food. But they have a different system. Um, they also do eat olive oil. In fact, that's probably the most important thing is not the lack of butter, but the presence of olive oil. They probably eat two or three tablespoons of olive oil a day each. They also have balsamic vinegar, which is made from, uh, it's a great product. And it is, they put that on their salads with the uh, olive oil. And that is very healthy, but they do use butter. So it's not a lack of butter or, or milk products. And their desserts are, are honestly, like I said, they're usually fairly sweet, not as sweet as some of the things that you can get here, not as big a portion. And they are, uh, but they are homemade and they aren't frozen or dry or dried or, I mean, they, they just are fresh. So I think the real difference is the way they produce their foods is that everybody has, they have extended family households in many t cases where they have several generations living in a household and one person is in charge of cooking. So that one person shops, gardens, plans the meals, and makes the meals for the whole family who are out working. Uh, they also don't have cars. <laughs> they aren't zooming around in a car everywhere. They walk their children to school. They, they walk to church. They, you know, they live in smaller communities. They aren't spread out like we are in St. Louis or in um, California, which is really spread out. I mean, it is something they stay within their, their communities, so they don't have to get into a car, and they walk everywhere. Even little old gals that are with, they use a cane and they're walking. I mean, it's amazing. They have, um, they've kept their cardiovascular strength really good through exercise that they don't even consider exercise. They're, um, they shop every day, which I don't think most of us have time to do. They, uh, they have their garden next to their house. Uh, besides walking everywhere, they also have nut trees, fruit trees, and they eat food that's in season. And so they, and, and they, they pick their own food when it's ripe, not when it's green and then it ripens on the way to market. So it's always healthier to pick ripe fruit, ripe nuts. Um, and that is something that we literally can't do. I don't expect us to ever be able to change our, our lifestyle to this. I think we should just pick up the good things that they do and try to uh, implement those. But we can't implement their lifestyle. They come home for lunch. They eat family lunches. They have their biggest meal in the middle of the day. Some, some of the countries, Spain and uh, for one, and Italy have afternoon siestas where they sleep for a couple hours and then they work later than, than because they have to make up for those few hours in their stores. But it's a smaller community, and I, I just don't think that we can, we can be them and lower our, uh, our heart, heart and stroke numbers by doing that. So if you want to take something 
out of this. It would be really good if you could if you could get bread that doesn't have preservatives in it, like if you got it at the deli or if you got kosher bread or I love challah bread, then it doesn't have anything in it that's going to preserve it. You have to keep it in the refrigerator so it doesn't get mold on it. Um, but still, uh, if you shop often, you're going to go get your bread whenever you run out. Then you're going to go get your bread. You're not going to just have it around for a couple weeks. Um, they don't eat candy and junk food. and I mean, in general, in the cities they do because they become Americanized, sadly. Uh, they've developed some of our bad habits. But um, they are, they're very basic about their eating, and, it's, and it is homemade. If you could have somebody at home always cooking for you, it would be awesome. But honestly, we don't live like that. So if you can take something back, eat olive oil as much as possible, use balsamic oil on your salads, have a salad every day, try to get your, your bread without preservatives, um, eating um, milk, cheese, eggs. Those are actually very good for you, and they're really good for your protein and your ability to, to make muscle. So there's nothing wrong with that, and they leave that out of this diet completely. And um, eating fresh fruit is also good, and if we could just eat fruit for dessert, that would be helpful. But you can't eat fruit with sugar on it and with ice cream on it. It's just plain cut-up fruit. So that would be very healthy. I don't think that that's possible in our society as we are going very fast and faster every year. And so, you know, one thing that surprised me in Europe was they have little teeny tiny refrigerators like I have behind my desk in the office to keep water and, uh, and food and fruit. And, but they don't have a huge refrigerator and a huge freezer to keep things forever. They shop locally and every day. So when I say I would like my patients to eat a Mediterranean diet, what I mean is I'd like them to eat without preservatives. I'd like them to exercise actively every day. I don't expect them to give up their cars. I want them to eat olive oil and balsamic vinegar. I'd like them to eat um, grass-fed beef, um, lamb, uh, chicken, uh, you know, or natural-fed chicken or free-range chicken. I'd want them. To, I want them to have as many fresh vegetables and fruit as possible, salad a day, and um, to shy away from everything that is a, so a fast food or an easy food or a frozen food or a, or a canned food and try to get your vegetables and fruit and, and uh, beans in a way that doesn't have preservatives. So if you want to be healthy, that's really what a Mediterranean diet is. Otherwise, you're going to have to go live there because it's a whole different world. And... Um, and yes, they are healthier as they get older. I don't know if we can adopt all of that, but I hope so. So I hope this helped you with interpreting what people mean by the Mediterranean diet, what your doctor means, and what they mean when they just throw that term out. And I, I hope you understand that it's not all achievable in our society, especially not for everyone, but it would be, it would be a nice thing to use as our goal to get rid of preservatives more and more and to eat locally, eat healthy. So please think about that next time you go to the grocery store and when you make your meal planning for the next week. I hope this helped. See you next week. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.